Okay, lesson 23. The question of the day is, how can the new types of collisions and modeling movement be used to create a game? So we are going to be creating a flyer game today. Okay, and here's what it looks like. In this flyer game, the player tries to collect coins and the rocks push the player across the screen. When the player goes off the screen, the game is over. Play the game a few times and discuss it with your partner. You have already, okay, here's the key. You have already learned all the skills you need to code this game. You'll be making your own game in this mini project. So let's take a look at it. Obviously, yeah, we're going to need to, okay, so you avoid the rocks. Is there a left and a, no, yeah, yeah, you can go left and right, or, yeah, you can go left and right a little bit. Okay, so this is cool, and it's very difficult, but it doesn't keep score, something to think about. Okay, let's move on to exercise three. Okay, so here we're creating our sprites. It says, you will need a player, the flyer, this guy, a target, the coin, and two obstacles, the rocks. You can make them anything you want. Let's just try and match it. Okay, so they have, they have these things. They have the fly bot. I don't know what's going on with this animation, but I'm just going to trust that it works. And they have all three animations to make it easy. So all we have to do, and they already have the Flybot created for us. All we have to do is create the coins and the obstacles. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to copy and paste this twice. Oh, whoops. Uh, yeah, let's paste it there and let's paste that there and we're going to need to change let's call this coin coin for the sake of time on my video i'm, I'm going to pause the video but make this coin set the animation to coin make this rock and set the animation to rock okay so pause the video and make sure your code looks like mine okay so hopefully yours looks like mine, but it still isn't perfect because we have the rocks uh, and the coins all over the animated player. Um, but you know what? I'm not sure if this level they want us to put them in the correct spot. Scale each. Okay, so yeah, in this level we are going to put them where we want to put them. So let's do that. And how do we do that? How do we position them where we want on the screen? Well, we use these X and Y values. So why don't you play with those right now? Okay, so I changed these X and Y values so that they weren't overlapping with the player. But here's the thing, we need two rocks. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to copy and paste this. All right, and then I'm going to, I'm gonna put it right directly underneath that. And we're gonna name it rock two okay and these scales are actually all correct 0.8 they made it very easy for us so now uh, this will be overlapping so let's change that to 300 200 okay cool and let's see if we need to do anything else set the starting X Velocity of the obstacle scale each one. These are good size. Set the each right to the animation. So I think all we need to do is set the starting x velocity of the rocks. Okay, so let's do that now. Oh, here's the block for that. So I'll put one under the rock dot scale, and then I'll put another one under rock two dot scale. And let me give myself some more space to view this code. So I'm going to click this arrow. Okay. And the X velocity will say one. Now let's say five and see how fast that goes. Oh, whoops. I forgot to name, name those properties, sprite properties. Make sure you put rock up here and rock two down here. Okay, 
All right, cool. So it, we did set the velocity. So go ahead and click finish. Okay, if the user doesn't do anything, the player sprite should fall just like that. Do this. Find the co uh, code comment falling. So that's going to be in our draw loop. Oh, it's right up top in the draw loop. Falling. Use the counter pattern to with the player. Okay, use the counter pattern with the player sprites velocity y to make the fl flyer fall. Okay, so velocity y, I see it right here. Velocity y equals, uh, and I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to type this in. So it's, um, what is it? Player? Is that our variable name? Yes, player. So we're going to say player dot velocity y. And we're just going to type this in. Player dot velocity y. Um, I think it's addition to make it go down. So plus uh, five. Three, let's say three. Oh, whoops! I meant to. I meant to click out here. Okay, yeah. So when you click over in your workspace, it adds the uh, plus sign block for you. So yeah, that it looks like it worked. Yeah. Test your code to. Yep, it worked. Okay, so we did this correctly. So let's hit finish. Move on. Okay, exercise five. Next, the player sprite needs to jump when the user presses the up arrow. Do this. Find the code comment player controls okay uh, player controls right there uh, add a conditional if uh, that checks whether the user is pressing the up arrow okay so where I think control is where yep uh, okay so right there like read these comments change the y velocity when the user clicks up so if up key down up I'm pretty sure is what we're going to use it's already set to up so we don't need to change it uh, add code inside the conditional that will change the sprites velocity to move up if the up arrow is pressed um so I think I'm not sure if we'll need the counter pattern here uh, let's see let's just add a velocity y and we'll set it to player. We gotta say player, and we'll set it to I don't know five. Let's see how this works. Ah. Okay, so that's so we'll need to do something greater than five, I think. Uh, let's say fifteen. No, that didn't work. Um, so let's try the counter pattern. Player dot velocity y plus five. Oh, whoops, that's equals plus five. And click out here so it turns into that block. Huh. Oh, I'm making it go down further. Whoops. We want it to be negative. So I'm going to go into show text mode. And I'm going to make that a negative. And now back to blocks mode. I'm going to run it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, yeah, so that's that's it. It works. Cool. All right, so that is all. I guess that's all we need to do for exercise five. So go ahead and move on to exercise. Okay, exercise six is floating left and right. The flyer should also be able to float left and right. So we're going back to where it says player control, and we're going to do the same thing, but um, x velocity left, x velocity right. So we need if statements. And always read these comments, guys. They're giving you hints. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do left, and then I'm going to copy and paste it and just change the... Um, the math, the uh, what are those called? Operations. I'll change it from plus to minus. So we want velocity x. Oh no, we don't. We want if key down left. And we want player dot velocity x. 
player dot velocity x equals player dot velocity x. Uh, left is negative, so negative five we'll say. Uh, and this should be good. So let's copy this. And we're going to paste it down here. But this time, we need this key down to be to the right. And we need this operation. Uh, what, are the, what are the mathematical operators? Jeez, operators. We need it to be a positive instead of a negative. And that should do it. Let's see. Oh, whoops. Oh, wow. Yeah, we did it, but that's, I think, yeah, f these numbers are too high. So let's change it to three. And guys, I would, I would encourage you to even make your flyer your flyer, your coin, and your obstacles even smaller because we're working with a small screen. So it would make sense for these these sprites to be extremely small. I'm not going to do it in the video, but okay. So it is floating left and right. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, let's move on to exercise seven. Okay, this is looping. When the obstacles move off the screen, they should loop back to the other side at a random position do this okay you know what first of all i'm going to make my objects move the same way that they do in this um because my objects right now are just moving to the right so actually i'm actually going to make them both move to the right but i'm going to make them start over here instead of right in the middle of the screen so let's these are the rocks and their X value. Let's make that negative 50, negative 50. And I'll increase this to 300. So rock two's Y value is 300. And look what that's going to do. See how they're starting on the left side of the screen? I like that. Okay, so now let's do this. This is looping. So when the obstacles move off the screen, so look. This obstacle comes back, okay? It starts over. Goes off the screen, starts over. Goes off the screen, starts over, okay? All right, so how do we do that? And I have two minutes until I have to start a new video.